Hello everyone, welcome to Hippo Dairy. My name is Lingam. Thank you for watching this video. This is part two of the series where we are discussing about uh, creating a pagination control in uh, WPF using MVVM design pattern. So here uh, in this uh, part two, we will see how we can design a user control. So we are not going to use uh, anything else. We are not going to use binding or MVVM, nothing. It's plain creating just the user control just designing that's it and we'll go back here and uh, let us start designing okay 50 50 and the width be 600 see uh, on the left side i'm going to give a uh, number of items per page maybe that is user changeable on the right side i'm going to give next uh, current page page 1 of 50 blah 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 so we need two grids. See, this video assumes that you know about WPF and you are here only to see how to create this uh, pagination model. So that being said, don't expect me to explain many things in detail. Obviously, I will try to explain uh, things in detail, but I don't know whether this is equal to auto. Let it be auto. OK. The left side we will have a text block and uh, let's say this is items per page or call whatever you want or let's say display items and then let's close it and I don't want this to be like it's a vertical alignment is equal to center so that it's always in the center and the next text block is also going to okay we have only two columns right so let us put it inside a stack panel and uh, let us try to put it here and let's call this orientation as horizontal and here text box that will be better text box text is equal as of now let's start with 15 this going forward will be changed this is just for uh, reference purpose as of now let's say the width is equal to 35 uh -oh. 35 okay and uh, the i will give content alignment is equal to center perfect so I have my display items count, which is going to be 15 or whatever it is. And then on the right side, uh, I will have another stack panel and I will call my orientation same like this. Orientation is equal to horizontal and the alignment will be on the right side so that it starts from the right. So what do we need here? Uh, first thing that we need here is same like this text block text page okay it's not on the right side because we haven't given the grid grid dot column is equal to one so now it's on the right side okay what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and paste two times okay so I'm going to call this something like page one of of fifteen. Then I will change this to this. This doesn't have to be text box. User is not going to change it. So let's change this as well as text box and let this go away. Let this also go away and. Uh, where do I have the width here? I don't need the width here, here, and I need some space between them. So let's say margin is equal to five comma zero, five comma zero, and I will use the same on this side. And just for reference purpose, I will give the foreground as blue. Okay, we have something like this. 
and what we need uh, so this shows the current page and the uh, total pages and uh, other things we also need to have a separator now so uh, i don't have to you can implement better separator but i will just uh, stick with the uh, minimal one something like this and then we'll also have a margin which is this and okay i am just calling this as a separator but obviously this is not a separator and i will have another text block we'll see go to Okay, here we have a text block, and a hyperlink, and say previous, and I will have another text block, and say next. Ah, we need some space here. Margin is equal to 10 comma 0. Oh. See, the reason why every time I try to type the number it's missing is in my keyboard I have changed the what do I say yeah I have switched off or turned off my number pad in my laptop that's the reason why whenever I try to type from my number pad it's changing okay here we go so we have the base uh, model for pagination so this is going to be dynamic so like if you change it to 500 let's say will it change will it change to 400 perfect so we need to set some minimum size as well minimum width should be at least 450 so just in case if user makes a mistake it has to be okay we have got a model now oh, sorry we have got a um, design what we are planning to do and we can easily use this something like this like uh, we need to refer this project like add reference to the project helper controls we have the controls now and this is UC pagination so first you need to refer it right so let's call it as helper control is equal to helper controls and I'm not going to check for the model so let's call UC pagination and here we are we need to do one more thing we need to alignment it's not horizontal alignment it's going to be vertical alignment vertical alignment is equal to bottom okay there we go so this is part one uh, what we have done is we have seen how to create the base setup we have seen how to create the base uh, pagination model and we have not done anything yet this is just the phase one we will see in the next video how to take it forward. Thank you for watching so far. It's time for a recap. In this video, we have seen only one thing that is designing the pagination control. We did not uh, bind, we did not uh, use uh, MVVM, nothing. It was a plain uh, creation of pagination control. So, what we have done first is we created an empty WPF project. So we did not create a class library because our main aim is to create a class library like uh, it should be a DLL file and which can be referenced into other projects. But instead of creating a class library, we just started with the WPF project. The reason, because when you start a new WPF project, you get all the uh, references like uh, you get the system.xaml, you get system. Uh, uh, windows, system. Windows input. So all the namespaces and all the it's not namespaces. All the project requirements will be loaded because we are obviously going to create a user control. But this, when you create a new WPF project, this uh, will be the output will be a exe file. So the next step, what we did was 
we changed it into a class library in the output we basically uh, went to the properties and changed it and then we deleted the app dot xaml app dot uh, the startup files including the main window that's all so thus by doing this two steps we created a project and then we made it as a dll library output the next step what we did was we created the user control itself and then we started designing it as per the requirement so that's what we did so i hope this is clear for you people in the next video we will see how we can create a view model and then bind it to our view thank you if you have not subscribed so far please do subscribe to our channel thank you